Okay, starting off, we're going to do C6, H15O2N. Do the first thing we always do, if we have the molecular formula, we do the degrees of unsaturation. So for this, the degrees of unsaturation is zero, meaning we have no pi bonds or rings, right? No pi bonds or rings here. Next thing we're going to want to look at is IR if we have it. For this one, I do not have anything about IR here at all. So no IR stuff. I have proton and carbon. So I'm going to write out the proton ones first. Okay, so for the NMR, we have four signals. Four signals, C6, H15O2N. So let's label these. Always label A, B, C, and D. So we have four different types of signals, so four types for the HNMR. So four types. And if I see this as being H15 and only having four types, that seems like not a lot, right? So this should kind of say to me something about symmetry, right? A few peaks and like 15 of these hydrogens, that doesn't seem like it adds up, right? It seems like they'll be symmetrical at some point, right? So let's first, you know, you can't start anywhere. The first thing I usually look for is two things that are coupled to each other. Right, if I can see that things are coupled to each other, that gives me a good idea that obviously they're three bonds away. So which two things are coupled to each other here? B and D. B and D are for sure, right? Right. These two guys are coupled together. They're, they are coupled together. So let's shrink maybe this down. Shrink this one down too. All right. So what are they going to be? So B is two H's. It's a doublet, right? So I'm going to think for B, I'm going to think CH... Right, CH2, so this is B, B. Now B is a doublet, that means it has how many nearest neighbors? One. One, and what is that nearest neighbor? D. D, right, so C, and then there's H, D. But now D is only worth one H, right? So nothing else can be over here, right? We don't know what's there. Just like there must not be any neighbors on this other side as well, right? If only thing that B hears is D, and the only thing D hears is B. So over here, there should be no neighbors on this piece, right? So let's check off those pieces. Wait, I have a question. When you're doing this, are you mostly just looking at the amount of H's there? Are you mm -hmm. Yep. There? Like not, like, I wait to look at the frequencies till later. Frequencies, I wait till the end, right? I wait through the frequencies till the end, right? Because the frequencies is going to be helpful more later on. So now let's go back here and say, okay, we have C6H15O2N. Uh, so we're going to subtract out a piece that's C2H3, right? So that leads to C4H12O2N, right? Everybody with me? So here's one piece. Now we have another peak at 2.36 H's, that's a singlet. So can we have a hydrogen with six H's on it? No. But you could have two CH3s, right, that are exactly the same. So we could have a CH3, that's for A. We don't know what's there. No, but it can't have any neighbors. And we can have another, right, CH3. Right? And that would count for right, the, C, the six H's, and they're all singlets. And they're going to have to be exactly the same, because right, carbon can't have six hydrogens on it. So the question is, how do we know CH3s? Well, the first thing we said was there's 15 H's and only four peaks. So we knew there's going to be symmetry. Yeah. So the symmetry, some of these must be like double counters, essentially. Right? There must be, this is, six H's are all the same. That makes me think two CH3s are going to be exactly the same. Right? The first thing we said was symmetry. So another thing to look for, right, is you, if you see things like six H's or four H's that are the same, you know that can't be on one carbon. It has to be on two different carbons. So you start to recognize, right, a carbon can't have six hydrogens. It can't have four hydrogens and be attached to anything else. So if you see that, you should also be thinking symmetry. Good. Okay, so we have HA crossed off now. And HA is going to be, so let me, so I'm moving to the side now. <laughs> That's worth C2H6, right? C2H6. So what do we have left? We would have C2H6O2N. Good. Now what about C? 
Now C is, again, six H's at the singlet. So I'm thinking, again, symmetry, two CH3s. Let's see, C, C, no neighbors. C, H, C, H, C, H, C, no neighbors, okay? So there's a piece, there's a piece, piece, piece. So let's subtract that part out. That would be what? That'd be minus C2 H6, right? So all you have left is O2 and N. Right? Ooh. Right? It's hard. There's no IR. So maybe somebody's like, oh, maybe that's a nitro group. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We could at this point, I think at this point we could probably figure it out without the carbon NMR. It gives you a carbon NMR as well. And you already did degrees on saturation, so you know there can't be a carbonyl, there can't be a pi bond, there can't be a ring. What I do at this point is look at the frequencies, right? So I've crossed out HC. Look at the frequencies. Look for things that are de-shielded, right? There's a peak at 4.5, 4.5. What does that tell you? If something's at 4.5, that's pretty de-shielded, right? So maybe it's probably going to be near the oxygen. And now if it's normally next to an oxygen, if it's next to one oxygen, what would the frequency be? 3.5. But... Two is going to make it even more de-shielded. So I would be thinking, right, HD here, maybe it's next to two oxygens, right? Maybe there's two oxygens here. So let's start shrinking this down. And start putting things together. So HD, I'm going to say HD here. I'm going to say it's next to an oxygen, next to an oxygen. HB... It's still there, HB. <clears throat> so that's why I think HD is next to two oxygens. I still don't know what's on the other side there. But now let's look at, let's pick another one. 3.2, let's say the next most de-shielded thing, 3.26. Six H's at 3.26. At 3.26, what, or 27, what does that tell you? What is that probably next to, 3.27? That's, that's the normal spot oxygen's at, right? Two oxygens, right? Having two oxygens will make you farther than 3.5, 3.2, makes it at 4.5. But 3.2 is kind of the sweet spot for right, being two bonds from the oxygen. So that would be C then. HC is actually out here. So let's see. We've, we can check off that piece, that piece. We've already used our two oxygens, right? So we can cross off our oxygens, right? We've used two of them. What do we have left to do? So HB, where is HB at? 2.45. Well, that's really close to what? Being next to a nitrogen. So put the nitrogen over there. And 2.3, again, is close to being next to that nitrogen. And what do you have left, right? So if we've checked off this piece, we still have two CH3s, the A's. They must be what? Attached to the nitrogen. nitrogen. A, 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 A. So now we go back and check to make sure everything's right. Our splittings, our couplings, our frequencies all make sense, right? We haven't lost anything, right? We, we, Cross off our nitrogen there, and now I go back and check to make sure everything works. Yeah. Right? So some take-home messages here. Right? You find your pieces. Degrees on saturation, four types. See only four types to see 15 hydrogens? You think symmetry. Also, I thought symmetry because I saw six H's. There's no such thing as a carbon bond to six hydrogens. That immediately tips me off saying there must be some hydrogens on different carbons that are the same. Symmetry. Find your pieces, look who's coupled to each other first, find that. Be sure to keep subtracting out as you go the elements. Find all your pieces, then go back, look at the frequencies. Right? Look at the most de-shielded thing first usually. And then if something's like 4.5, you say, well, that must be next to, what do I have left as electronegative? I have oxygens. It's going to take two oxygens to make that D, that de-shielded. Right? And then go from there. Frequencies are the last thing you look at. Do the final piece and then check it. So there's also was carbon was also given for this. He actually didn't need it to solve this, but we can use the carbon NMR to check what we did. 
Again, you can look at the carbon atom R and say there's one, two, three, four types, but you had six carbons. So obviously you had to know this molecule has some sort of element of symmetry because if it didn't, I would have six sig unique signals, but I only have four signals in the carbon atom R. So you look where these things are at. A lot of these are carbons that are either bonded to nitrogens or, car or oxygens, right? That region of nitrogen bonded to oxygens. And then one, right, would be well, much more de-shielded because that's the one probably with the carbon that's bonded to two oxygens, be much more de-shielded, be in a range you wouldn't expect to be farther downfield. So, but these check out, right? So if you look at our molecule, right, we have one type, two, three, four types of carbons. So I just go back and check, right? And I've said this before to people, but if you get stuck and you check and you wrote, and you say you did, you did a molecule and you, you go back and check and you realize it's wrong, I'd rather have you write, I know this is wrong and here's why, than to believe it wrong. Now, if you have it right and you write that, that's not a good situation. But I'd rather have you write, I, I've checked, I know this is wrong and here's why, than just leave it because then I assume you thought it was right. All right. So make sure you go back and check. That's what this whole process is about, being able to go back and check. So for this problem, we're not given, we're not given a molecular formula. But we're, set, we're told the, the M of Z, the molecular ion, the molecular mass is 71. So that tells you what the whole mass of the molecule is, 71, right? It's an even or odd mass. Odd. odd. So that all, we, when we're given these, we always should be thinking about the nitrogen rule. So if it's an odd mass, that means you have how many nitrogens? Odd or even? Odd. odd. And usually it's easy to stick with one. And it's just, all right, so one, let's just assume, right? So we're saying odd, and we're going to say has one N, question mark, right? But we're writing that right away, okay? What else does it give us? In the IR... These are the peaks. Okay, we have three peaks in the IR they gave us. So there, might, there probably are more, but they're just giving these. So you've one at 3,200, that's strong and broad. So that should tell you what? OH, OH or? NH. OH or NH, right? So you're saying, so you write OH or NH, right? You have a peak at 2,250, what is that telling you? 2,250. Should be telling you... This would be nitrile or alkyne, right? Good. And then they're telling you there's nothing else from 1500 to 2250. That means what? No. That means no C double bond Cs, right? No alkenes. And then also no C double bond Os, right? No carbonyls. From 1,500 to 2,250, that means they're telling you there's nothing there. So no carbonyls and no alkenes, right? No, none of that double bond region. Good. We don't know which is rich at this point, but we wrote it down. The NMR is going to help us figure out what, we have, what the other pieces are. So you have three peaks, three types. So you have A, B, C. Let's first look at the ones that are coupled to each other. So A and C are coupled to each other. Let's look at C. So C, we're saying, so if I shrink that down. C we're saying is what? It's two H's. And it must be next to HA, right? Because it's also worth two H's. We don't know what's on the other side, do we? We know they're coupled to each other. And if you're a triplet, how many nearest neighbors do you have? Two. So we know that piece is together. So now we can take 71 minus what? Carbon's worth 12, so 24 plus 4, 28. So 43 left. Right, 43 left, is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. So we can cross off that and that. So now at this point, we're, it's pretty tough. One thing you could look at here is 43, is that an even or odd mass? Odd. So that, that piece still has the nitrogen in it, right? Because at this point, it's tough. You can either say, OH, now we're kind of going back to our IR and saying, well, is it nitrile or alkyne? You know, what is it going to be? The problem with, there's two ways you could look at this. This has two open sites, right? If it's an OH or NH, if it's an NH, you have to, you won't be, essentially, you won't have enough things to bond to it. Right. Also, usually the D2O shake 
it usually is much more prevalent for OHs than it is for NHs. Right? The, DO, the D2O shake is, right? So let's just let's just try. Let's say it is the nitrile, or let's just say it's let's say it's in OH first, right? If we subtract out OH, what would that be from this thing? So oxygen 16, 17. So minus 17, 3, 1, 6, 26. 26, is that right? Yep. So that means I have an OH, and that means if I have a nitrogen still, I have to use it, what, do I, what does it have to be probably? If I use the OH, then this has to be the C triple bond to N, right, is the other piece. How did you know it was that? So again, right, how would I know, right? I might not have known. I'd have to guess and check here at some level. We could go through trying it with the NH and the alkyne, but I think we'd get in trouble trying to find it, how to make it work. So let's just let's do the right answer first, and then we'll go back and look at how we, how we could have done it, how we could prove it it's wrong the other way. So at this point, right? Also, another thing you could another thing you could have looked at if you were next to an NH, what would you what what kind of frequency you, would you be at? Probably two point five. We have this peak at three point eight five, right? So that should be telling you what oxygen. Right? And the only, time we had, only thing we had an oxygen up here from the IR was with an OH. So I, and that, that's another thing I would have looked at and said, well, 3.85 right, makes, makes me think oxygen. So that's why I went for the OH instead. Right? And if that's being used, then the nitrile must be the other piece. So that would that'd be the first clue, right? You get to the very end, you're kind of stuck here. You're kind of stuck at this point. And you say, well, I don't know what 3.4, I don't know what this broad singlet's going to be. You say, well, wait a second. Look at the frequency for C, 3.85. That's pretty de-shielded. That would make me think not next to an N, but next to a O. And the only place I had an O was with that OH. And if I use the OH, right, if I use the OH, then I must use the nitrile then instead to get the, ni the nitrogen incorporated. Now to put it together, right, all you have to do is put the, put, actually the O should be next to HC because it's more de-shielded. So the final thing, first we'll subtract out 26, right? Because the nitrile is worth 26, so that gets to zero. So that's good. And the final piece would be there'd be an OH next to CHC, because that's deshielded, which is next to HA, which then was next to the nitrile. Right, and the reason I knew it was an OH sign NH, 3.85, de-shielded. That's, that's where that'd be something next to an oxygen, not next to a nitrogen. Right? And some people might say, well, about 2.62, that could be next to a nitrogen. Yes, it could, but that still doesn't help. I still need, some, I saw the higher frequency one, 3.85, it has to be next to an oxygen. So it makes me think I must have an OH. Okay, so we did degrees on saturation, C6H10O, and the degrees on saturation is 2, meaning we have two pi bonds, or we have two rings, or we have one ring and one pi bond, right? Remember, degrees on saturation is rings and pi bonds added together. What else do we have here for our IR? So the IR, they're only giving us two signals. So that is, just because they give us two doesn't mean they're not giving all, that means they're probably not giving us all the stretches. But we have a peak at 3,300 3, uh, wave numbers and 2,100 wave numbers. And they're telling us that the one at 3,300 is sharp, not broad. So actually, that's a dead giveaway. What is that one going to be? It's not. OHs and NHs are broad. 3,300 is alkyne CH. Right? OHs and NHs are broad. All right? The sharp ones, right, that's, an al that's a terminal alkyne. And then 2100 is the stretch for the actual triple bond, right? So does that cover our degrees on saturation? Yeah. Yep, because yep, uh, alkynes have two pi bonds, so we can check off that, right? Good. Now let's do the NMR. Okay, so we have three peaks, right, three peaks, um, which isn't a lot. So I'm thinking maybe symmetry. I also see one of my peaks is, has, is worth six hydrogens. Again, can a carbon have six hydrogens on it? No, so this is probably two CH3s that are exactly the same. Right? So I'm thinking symmetry already with this. Is anybody coupled to each other? 
No, so there's no, there's no couplings either. So in this case, I'm just gonna start drawing the pieces out. So for A, I'm gonna have a CH3A. I know it has no nearest neighbors, right? Because it's a singlet. It's a one. Right? I have one, B is a, just a CH that has no nearest neighbors, right? And then C is probably two CH3s. Again, though, any nearest neighbors? No. Nope. HC, HC, I don't know what's there. So let's subtract all this stuff out. Let's see where we're at. So we had C6, H10, O, let's subtract A, was A was a CH3. So C, what, 5, H7, O, so that's A. Let's subtract B out, B was what, a CH. Minus C H C four H six O. Let's track C out. C was what? C two H six minus C two H six. I have C two and O left, right? So now we're like, oh, okay, well I've done all my NMRs. Now I'm kind of stuck. What what have we forgotten from our IR? We have it. We know we have an alkyne somewhere. All right, so let's draw that piece in. So we know we have this showing up somewhere. And that's worth C2. So minus C2, all we have left is an oxygen, right? So we have an oxygen that's bonded somewhere too. So that, that's a piece. The oxygen's literally like a piece, right? So we know we have to have an oxygen. Let's put it an O like an ether that's bonded on either side. So let's circle all the pieces. Where'd you get the C2? I got the C2 from the alkyne, which we said from the IR we had, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. But I'm covered because now what's the last thing we do once we get our pieces? We want to go back and look at the frequencies. Now we're going to go back and look at the frequencies and see what's shielded or deshielded. So we have one peak that's A is a CH3 that's neck that's at 3.1. That's next to an oxygen. That would be next to an oxygen. I would guess that. So on one side of the oxygen is going to be C H3, that A part. So we could cross off A and then one side of the oxygen. But something else must be over there too. But there's nothing else that's really de-shielded, is there? C triple bond C. Hold on one second. So one thing we I forgot to mention, right? We forgot. We we went back and did this, this peak, this alkyne, but it was a terminal alkyne, right? What about the alkyne CH? The alkyne CH actually is HB. HB is the alkyne CH. Right? We saw an IR stretch at 3300. That's for the alkyne. H, right? So HB is actually right here next to the alkyne, right? How do I know it's B? Well, because I knew there's a CH stretch for the alkyne. Mm -hmm. It's at 2.4. See, look at where, where do alkyne uh, H's come out? Right around 2.4. They're lilic kind of, that area. And I know it has no nearest neighbors, and so that's what it has to be, right? That's what I have left. I knew from the IR I had a CH. So I'm looking at the NMRs, one H in a singlet, right? The way I drew it is fine. Right? I could have done this, and then I could have gone back and said, wait a second, I, have an al I know I have a terminal alkyne. You could have done this earlier. So that's the terminal alkyne H, right? So we got to go back and subtract again. We, our subtraction's off because of this. So our subtraction's off because of this. So let's re-subtract everything with this new idea. So let's go C6H10O. A was what? A CH3. 
C5, H7, O. B, let's just do the whole alkyne piece from this one. Right, the alkyne piece was a C2H. Right? So let's subtract C2H. Minus C2H. C3, H6, O. C was what? C was C2H6 minus C2H6. So we have left a C and an O. The O we've already covered. Right? The O is this ether. So that would be there. The C must mean we have a carbon that's not bonded to any hydrogens. Right? If you end up with, after the end, getting here, you have a carbon without any hydrogens bonded to it. Right? We end up with a carbon left over. This oxygen was there right, for the ether. And we also have a carbon then that has no, that has no hydrogens bonded to it. Right? So again, don't forget, same functional group, two dance moves. So we end up with a carbon and oxygen. You could have said the carbon maybe was bonded to the oxygen. It could have been. But we definitely have an ox a carbon here that wasn't bonded to anything else. No hydrogens, at least. No other hydrogens. So where can we put that? That This is where it gets a little tough. right? So we have what do we have left over to do? So we need to put our alkyne somewhere. If I put my alkyne here, I end the chain. right? So that can't work. I, I need to put something here that I can continue on, right? It has to be this carbon, right? So it has to be that. Now from there, when we're thinking about symmetry, so we've checked off this piece. What do we have left to add? We have to add our alkyne, and we have two CH3s left, right? We have a CH3 and a CH3 in the alkyne, and we have how many spots left? Two, three. They have to go there. Right? You have three things left, three spots open, that's where they go. All right, the tricky part with this one was, just kind of like I forgot almost, HB was this singlet on the alkyne, the H on the alkyne. You end up with a carbon that has nothing bonded to it, so it should look like this. C, H, these are HCs. C, And then the alkyne is off the end. Take a look at this. Now we go back and double check to make sure everything makes sense. So this is the right answer. The tricky part with this one was remembering, right, this alkyne, this terminal alkyne had an H involved and subtracting that piece out, right? And then you end up with a carbon that has no H's bonded to it. So you had to add things around that carbon. That's kind of the trick. And then HA, of course, is at 3.3, so you knew that had to be next to the oxygen, right, because it's de-shielded. Okay, so given, you're given a molecule, and you're, wanted to, you're asked to do a simulated NMR spectrum, a simulated NMR spectrum um, for this one. The first thing you need to do when you have these kind of problems is draw in all the hydrogens. So let's draw in all the hydrogens. So how many different types of hydrogen should we have here? Four. Four. So let's label them. A, B, C, and D. So we'd expect how many peaks? Four. four peaks, four signals, right? So four, four peaks. So let's go for A. A is worth how many hydrogens? Three. Three H's, so we'd have it worth three H's. How many nearest neighbors does A have? Two. 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 So we'd expect it to be A? Triplet, right? T. What frequency would we expect A to be at? Um, so, 0 to 1.5, I think, right? Yeah. Right? 0 to 1.5. Right? B. How many H's is B worth? Two H's. How many nearest neighbors is... How many, what's the splitting for B? What's the splitting? So, the splitting is going to be a quartet, Q. What frequency would B come in at? One five, one, two, one, five, two, two, five. Good. C. C is worth two H's. How many nearest neighbors? Zero, so it's a singlet. Where do we expect C to be at? 
We did the, we did one just like this on a clicker question. No, a little higher than that, right? You're you're both next to two bonds away from the oxygen and two bonds away from the pi bond, right? You're allylic and in that Z region. So do you expect it to be more around 4.2, 4.5? So we'd say 4.2. There's no nearest neighbors to see, right? One, two, three, four bonds. There's nothing three bonds away. There's no hydrogen. You can't hear any hydrogens. And then, of course, we go to D. D is worth how many H's? One. One. And we already know, do the H's on D ever do splitting? No. So it's going to be a singlet. It's going to be what kind of singlet even? A broad singlet, we could even say. Yeah. Right, it's going to be a singlet, usually be fat. And do we know the frequency it's going to be at? Not really. It could be kind of anywhere. <laughs> right, it's going to kind of show up anywhere. The OH's and NH's, we really don't have a good handle on where they're at. The carboxylic acid ones we do, but the other OH and NH's we do not. So now in this one, so I think um, you have enough now to answer this question. That's the first step. All right, so another one. C6H16N2. Drew on saturation here is zero. So again, no pi bonds and no rings. So the IR only tells us one thing. The IR tells us we have a stretch at 3281. So what does that mean? What, what function group must that be? Is there it's an OH? What's your molecular formula? C can't be an OH. What about an alkyne? Why couldn't it be a, a we did a, why couldn't it be a terminal alkyne? Because we have no pi bonds. You have no pi bonds available, right? So, right? It, there's three things it could be in that region. It could be an OH, an NH, or a SPCH, right? The alkyne CH. Can't be an OH. We don't have an oxygen in our formula. Can't be a terminal alkyne SPCH because we have no degrees of saturation, so it has to be NH. Now, don't forget, nitrogen has how many bonds? Three. Right. So when we draw that piece, remember, it's a little we got to make sure we say there's two sides open. So that's what the IR tells us. Look, let's look at NMR now. All right, so for this NMR, we have three peaks. So it's not a lot for H16, so we're automatically thinking symmetry. Another clue, you have... Right, can carbon have eight H's bonded to it? Can carbon have four H's bonded to it? Right, so these are probably, each of these is probably two different, like each two, there's a double of everything essentially. The other hint they give you, they say the triplet at 1.1, this triplet at 1.1 conceals a broad, a broad resonance that contributes to the integral. So they're saying this is not one peak. There's another peak, which would be, I would argue we'll call it, a prime, and I wouldn't, I usually I wouldn't do this to you, I would tell you that that is a broad S, I must tell you it's worth two H's. So this is really, 1.1 is really not eight, it's six, and there's another peak that's underneath it hiding that's broad and fat worth two H's. So what do you think that one represents? Maybe the NH, the broad, right? OHs and NHs are broad. So this is really, this 1.1 is really worth six Hs. And there's another peak that's worth two that's underneath it. And that'll happen in NMR. The peaks will sometimes get on top, will end up being on top of each other. I wouldn't do that to you in a test. I would just say, there's a peak at 1.1 that's worth one H that's, two, that's, that's broad and has, that's worth two Hs. Right? I would just say that. Okay, so we have four different types of peaks. We're still, we're still really thinking symmetry here, right? So really think in symmetry, no degrees on saturation. We got an NH. Let's just do this one. Broad S with two H's. And we're thinking symmetry. Is it going to be, so that's definitely the N, an NH. But is it going to be an NH2 or is it two different NH's? I would probably guess two NH's, right? Think about that symmetry again. So I would guess there's probably not just one of these, but actually two of those. So I would guess there's... And NH, a prime, don't know what's bonded to it. And there's another NH, a prime, right? Because this molecule is super symmetrical. It's almost like double of everything. So we can check off that. Now let's look at the two things that are coupled to each other. What are two things that are coupled to each other? A and B. And look at One's worth six and one's worth four. Well, that doesn't work. But it looks like a triplet quartet. 
That is something I told you to think about. What is that going to be? They're going to be an ethyl. And how many ethyls? This can't be two. Two. And they have to be exactly the same. Two ethyls that are exactly the same, right? So for this one, you're going to have, for A, it's going to be a CH3A. next to a C, B, and then another one of those, another exactly the same one of those. Let's go back and subtract some pieces. So that covers... A and B, let's make sure we're doing our math right. I'm not missing anything. So C6H16O, we're going to subtract out, or no, not O, huh. N2. N2. Let's subtract out N2H2. So that's C6H14. Let's subtract out our two CH2, CH3 pieces. So that'd be C4 minus C4. How many H's is that? 10. H10. What do we have left? C2, H4. Good. What other piece do we have left? C2 or C. And it's worth four H's in a singlet. So I can't have a carbon. I can have a carbon with four H's, but if I have a carbon with four H's, is it bonded to anything else? No. No. So... Let's make this two CH2s, right? Let's make it two, two CH2s. Now, why not make it a CH3 and a CH? Because can you ever make a CH3 and a CH exactly the same? No. no. So it has to be two CH2s, right? You divide by two. That's the best way to do it. So HC, HC, and a C, HC, and a CHC. So that counts off our HC. And that also finishes off C2H4. So we got all our elements involved. Good. Zero. We're done. Not zero. Not think that's an O. It's over. So how many pieces? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we do what? Now we go back and look at the frequencies and see what makes sense. So let's look at the one that's most deshielded, 2.83, that's C. So what do you think C is next to if it's next to 2.83? N. So let's see, let's put a C H C next to an N, which obviously is an H then next to it. And then what else do we want to put next to that N? What's that two? The B's at 2.66, right? Yeah. That's probably next to an N too, right? So let's put a C H B next to that N. And what else is attached to H B? H A is still, right? That looks good. We still, there's still something over here, though. So what does, that, what does that get for us? That crosses off one of these, one of those, and one of those. Huh. Uh -oh. This so molecule is very symmetrical, right? Yeah. So what do you think the rest of this is going to be? Another Just the exact same thing on the other side, right? So this HC is bonded, right? Do an N, an H. H, B, H, B, H. Oop. Too many. Do a, do, do, do. C, which is then bonded to a C, H, A. So now we want to go back and check, check our work. One thing that people might be confused about here, they might say, well, wait, H, C has nearest neighbors. Can you couple to yourself? No, right? HC is one, two, three bonds away from another HC. Right? Is that a different song? No. So they're singing the same song, so that's not coupled. And do things couple with NHs? Do NHs couple? No. 
Otherwise, everything works out. HC is at 2.8. That makes sense being near a two bonds away from a nitrogen. That's the right range. 2.66, again, is close next to that nitrogen. That's coupled there. And it's a very symmetrical molecule. We knew that from only four peaks. And also we see, right, six H's for one carbon or four H's, you know, right, is probably two carbons with the exact same hydrogens on different on the same symmetrical type of molecule.